Um, the treatment options for ACL tears can either be no surgery or surgery. Can you tell us when, when would non-operative treatment for an ACL tear be appropriate? Well, I think it's very unusual to not to have it fixed because uh, although there are people who can play a lot of sports uh, and, and be stable, but it's a really small percentage. And all the long-term studies show even those that were you know, functionally fairly stable, they go on and develop early uh, degenerative or traumatic arthritis. And that uh, by fixing the ACL, uh, you may not be preventing the arthritis that's going to occur, but I think you can slow it down. In your experience, have athletes with an ACL tear um, been able to return to sports with a functional brace? Um, I, I know you just mentioned that some athletes can go back to play, but uh, does a brace really help them do that if they don't have surgery? Uh, in my experience, very, very rarely does it provide the stability you need for any cutting, decelerating, or jumping sports. In the, in the 1970s, when you were uh, recruited to the University of Wisconsin, that was uh, during that, that was a time when you started to basically uh, invent and perfect the ACL reconstruction. Um, can you tell us more about that period of time? I mean, many people would say that that was uh, dark ages of sports medicine, and I know that during that time you were shedding light on a lot of sports injuries that most surgeons had never heard of by the, the articles that you were writing in the peer-reviewed literature. But specifically with, the, with regards to the ACL reconstruction procedure, can you tell us more about your experiences that helped you develop the, that surgical technique? Well, I was very fortunate to go into the Naval Academy, and uh, you know John Bergfeld, one of your oh, yeah. one of your teachers and a fantastic West Peak surgeon. John and I overlapped for a year, and we saw tons and tons and tons of acute ACL tears in the midshipmen and in the military personnel station around Washington. And at that time, people were trying all sorts of what we call extra-articular procedures, uh, no one was really trying to establish you know, a new ACL. They were trying. They didn't even recognize that the ACL was the important thing. They were, they were tightening up uh, structures on the inside of the knee or the outside of the knee. Uh, at West Point, they were trying to repair uh, the ACL. Well, we did them all, and they were basically all failures. And so when I went to Wisconsin, that was my prime goal, was to try and develop a procedure that would give long-term stability to the knee and get the athletes back playing. And actually, uh, uh, Anna Erickson, who was from Sweden, on his first visit to the States uh, at a meeting, presented uh, the work that his chairman, uh, Ivor Palmer, had done on a couple of uh, patients using patella tendon. And I thought this was absolutely the answer. And when I went back, started doing some, and I found out that uh, the technique that they had uh, proposed would not allow you to put the graft anatomically. And the knee joint is a, is a cam. It's a very sophisticated joint, and you have to place the graft absolutely perfect if you want it to work. And so I felt that uh, if, if we modified it, that it would work. And then we went to the uh, primate center, and we did about 80 rhesus monkeys, and we did all the scientific testing on them. Uh, we we, we uh, had a... Had, Intervals, time intervals up to a year, we would sacrifice them and pull the ligament apart. We did uh, injected uh, dye into the vessels to see if the uh, anterior cruciate had blood supply. And all of our work clearly shown that the uh, patella tendon graft, if you placed it anatomically, would regenerate into a new anterior cruciate ligament and was more than strong enough. Uh, actually, it's actually one and a half times as strong as a a normal of your own ACL at uh, nine months. And so time has proven, you know, about one million uh, ACLs are performed a year throughout the world. And if you place in the right spot, I really, uh, you should get a 95% or even higher success rate as far as stability goes. The term autograph means that uh, tissue is taken from a patient's own body to uh, uh, to replace that torn ACL tissue. Can you tell us about, I know you had mentioned the patella tendon graft. Can you tell us about some other options uh, that are used for the ACL reconstruction in terms of autograph tissue? That you know, the, for the last oh, 30, 40 years, the, AC, the patella tendon has been what we call the gold standard. 
Uh, many people now use the hamstring tendons, which are which is a good autograph. Uh, uh, that the only problem with the hamstrings, if you have a hyperflexible, hyperelastic female, they have a higher failure rate. Uh, I'm doing an awful lot of uh, what we call quadriceps tendons because by taking the quadriceps tendon, it's stronger than the patella tendon, and the muscles don't shut down as much. And so actually the patient's able to get back playing competitive sports probably about two months sooner by taking uh, the quad tendon. Uh, but the, all three of those autographs are very good because what you put in is not what you get. The body doesn't doesn't just say, okay, this is your, your graft. The body actually eats up the graft and lays down a new ligament on top of it. It's like in New York City when you, you know, you're restricted on what you can do, so they take down the brickwork and leave up some of the framework and then build a new frame around it. Right. So you would say if you were looking to get an athlete uh, back to competition uh, as soon as you could, your your choice for a graft would be their quadriceps tendon over the patella tendon or the hamstring. Well, actually, uh, I take if I need somebody back playing at three months, I take patella tendon from the good knee and put it in the bad knee. Mm-hmm. Uh, Chris Chelios played in the NHL two and a half months after I did his ACL. Nicky Cromwell from Detroit. Uh, Red Wings uh, scored the winning goal with Torino at three months and a week after he had his, and actually Johan Franzen uh, played at Vancouver for Sweden in the past Olympic Games, and he was three months and two weeks. Um, if you take the graft from the opposite knee, you don't shut the muscles uh, on the injured knee don't shut down as much. Uh, if you do a hand, uh, quadriceps graft, most, most are able to play fully rehabbed at four months. If you use patellotin from the same knee, it's probably going to be five to six months. And if you use hamstrings from the same knee, it's probably going to be five to six months. 